the life of a, of a cameraman, a news cameraman, whether with motion pictures or whatever, is, um, is a most demanding life. It requires a specific type of individual, uh, possessive of certain qualities that is not really normal to most of us. It would not be unusual for a newsreel cameraman, for example, to get a call at uh, 2.30 in the morning. And it would be the boss assigning him to board a plane and fly off to heaven knows where and get the story. And the man had to be ready. He may have only had two hours sleep after a, a very rigorous assignment just preceding the one now handed him. December the 11th, 1937, I was taken aboard the U.S. gunboat, Yangtze Patrol gunboat, the Panay, with other uh, Americans who were in Nanking at the time for safety purposes. The Japanese were then pounding on the gates of Nanking. They were shelling across the river, the Yangtze River, and the Panay, where the Panay was lying and they were going to move the Panay up the river and take it out of the battle zone. The swift Japanese advance on the national capital paves the way directly for the tragedy of the Panay. Shanghai captured. The Nipponese invaders strike westward with incredible speed and soon are pouring shells and air bombs into Nanking. The defenders bravely ignore a Japanese ultimatum calling on them to surrender. Despite the deadly peril, Norman Alley takes his stand in the besieged city, recording the ruin of war amid the constant rain of steel and high explosives that takes hundreds of lives and lights grisly fires throughout the capital. Fleeing from the beleaguered city, a number of Americans and others arrive at the riverside, hoping to get aboard the Panay. Newspaper men and newsreel men who have remained to the last, ironically enough, there to find that their feeling of security under the stars and stripes is destined to become a mockery. A quiet Sunday afternoon, shortly after lunch, officers of the Panay and several of the refugees are chatting in the wardroom when suddenly planes appear. The ship has been bombed by Japanese Navy planes. The call to battle stations and the Panay crew rushes to defend their craft against the sudden, unwarranted, unheard of attack. I immediately went a few steps to my cabin, grabbed my IMO camera and a few rolls of film. The ship's machine gunners go into action, some of them half clad. The captain is wounded, so are others. The ship is a shambles. But whatever the cause of the unmerciful attack, the Panay men will fight to the end. It was touch and go. We thought, we thought we'd all be killed, frankly. And we, shot, we thought the ship was taking water so fast because one bomb had gone right through the deck and down and out, down, out, out of the hull. So abandon ship is the command. Wounded, blood-stained men first. The camera portrays heroism, sights, but not sounds. There was no sound equipment aboard the Panay, only silent cameras. I shot in, uh, during the attack, I shot uh, about 2,000, 20 rolls of IMO film, 100 foot rolls of IMO film, one angle or another. The riddle Panay bears her wounds bravely, but she is doomed without question. And now we go ashore with Norman Alley in one of the last boats to leave the ill-fated ship. Alley exposes himself to film the final moments of the gallant United States warship. And minute by minute now, she's nearer her end as she rapidly takes water and settles lower and lower. Back in the United States, Ali and his colleagues were believed lost. Universal News issued a special release on his disappearance. But he was much alive on the banks of the Yangtze, photographing the wounded and dying survivors of the Panay. Of the 60 aboard the ship, 27 had been hit. 
Painfully, Ali and his friends made their way down the Yangtze to Shanghai. From there, he and his film traveled to Manila by American destroyer, from Manila by Pan Am flying boat to Washington, D.C. There the footage was screened for President Roosevelt and the secretaries of Army and Navy. Ali's footage was politically explosive. Controversial subjects such as this were generally avoided by American editors. Their companies were inclined to regard the newsreel as a branch of show business rather than journalism. <laughs>